The successful formula of cinematic storytelling dictates that when the hero finally defeats the villain, assuming they actually do it, it typically happens near the end of the film. But movies sure would be boring if they all adhered to the same strict structure and so some have certainly played fast and loose with this rule over the decades. While a major villain needs to stick around for a large portion of any movie in order to sustain tension, some films have opted to give them premature dirt naps that few ever saw coming. And though audience Audiences might recall that some of these movie villains shuffled off their mortal coils a little earlier than you expected, you probably don't remember quite how long. In almost all of these cases, these unforgettable antagonists died before the full fat legit climax of the movie took place, delivering a false finish for the audience before the filmmakers decided to pile on another 20, 30 or even 50-ish minutes of added drama and carnage. I am Marcus Bronzy. This is What Culture, and here are seven movies where the villain dies earlier than you think. Number 7. Igor Korshinov, Air Force One classic 90s action flick Air Force One stars Harrison Ford as the President of the United States, James Marshall, who must fend off a group of terrorists who have hijacked the POTUS's plane led by the sadistic Igor Koshinov, aka Gary Oldman. He is the primary antagonist, so you'd expect him to only get the Hans Gruber treatment in the film's closing moments, right? Wrong. In fact, Koshinov gets his neck snapped by Marshall 25 minutes before the end of the movie, after which the President has to pilot a plane, fight off other fighter planes, defeat a duplicitous secret service agent and perform a daring mid-air evacuation after damage to the plane makes landing impossible. Action movies of this era were famous for tacking second climaxes onto them. Looking at you, speed. But at least in this case, it was entertaining, even if Oldman's hammy villain checked out almost half an hour prior to the end. Number 6. Shere Khan – The Jungle Book the original 1942 live-action adaption of Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book isn't quite held up in the same regard as the 1967 animation or Jon Favreau's more recent redo, but it's undeniably a gorgeous Technicolor triumph. However, Lawrence Stalling's screenplay made the peculiar decision to stage the climax of Kipling's source material in the middle of the movie, with Mowgli killing Shere Khan more than 40 minutes before the end of the film. Before the second act is even over, in fact. After this, Mowgli is captured and accused of witchcraft and the rest of the movie revolves around the central characters fighting over the treasure and the jungle eventually being burned to the ground. For comparison's sake, the 67 animation has Shere Khan dying just 10 minutes before the end, while Favreau does it about 15 minutes before the climax of his film. Number 5. Sauron Lord of the Rings Return of the King Extended Edition it's certainly no secret that the trilogy capping Best Picture winning The Lord of the Rings Return of the King bombards viewers with about half a dozen narrative off-ramps before finally wrapping up. This theatrical release isn't over until around 30 minutes after Sauron is actually defeated, but Peter Jackson's definitive extended edition, which has 51 minutes of footage to the runtime, dares to widen this gap to a level of practical self Parody. If you include the fan club credits stapled to the end of the extended edition, there's 50 minutes between Sauron's demise and the actual end of the film, during which every possible scrap of usable footage has seemingly been included. Number 4. Angiris – Godzilla Raids Again Godzilla Raids Again is the second entry into the hit monster franchise, and whilst not nearly as iconic as its predecessor, it nevertheless is a solid rock'em, sock'em creature feature. The film features Godzilla's first clash with another monster. In this case, it's his ancient arch enemy, and Geras. Rather than save the throwdown for the end of the movie as we would all expect, director Motsuyoshi Oda gets it out of the way mid-film. The battle itself is classic, two guys in suits monster brawl business, but ends rather abruptly when the Zilla chomps on Angiris's neck and promptly incinerates him with his atomic breath. All of this happens just 46 minutes into the film. Given that Godzilla raids again clocks in at 82 minutes, that's scarcely past the halfway mark, after which the story detours to focus Focus excessively on the human characters, who eventually end up launching a bombing run against the King of the Monsters and bury him in, well, it's Godzilla, so you gotta bury him in ice. Number 3. Martin Vanga, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo it's generally accepted that David Fincher's 2011 readaptation of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is an entertaining if slightly overbaked effort. That's partly down to the gruelling 158 minute runtime dragging on for almost half an hour after the villainous Martin Vanga 
is killed. It seemed like an attempt to wrap up basically every possible plot thread. And whilst you'd be forgiven for assuming that the more modest 2009 Swedish original was a little bit more terse and snappily paced compared to Fincher's deliberate style, it's actually paced almost exactly the same way. Well, that's until the theatre version ditches the villain uncommonly early, and this results in an elongated and somewhat deflating conclusion. Number 2. Calvin Candy, Django Unchained Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained is wholly concerned with Django played by Jamie Foxx and King Schultz played by Christopher Waltz retrieving Django's wife from her owner Calvin Candy who is played by Leonardo DiCaprio. The pair hatch a plan to purchase her without suspicion, one which goes kaput when an irate Schultz can no longer abide Candy's insidious behaviour and shoots him dead out of nowhere. What in another movie might be the storming climax is basically the start of the third act here. Given that the movie still has 35 minutes to go. The resulting shootout sees Schultz and many of Candy's henchmen killed while Django is taken hostage. In the real climax, Django is tortured and sold into slavery before escaping, returning to the Candyland estate, freeing Broomhilda, his wife, and murdering everyone in sight, then blowing the place to smithereens with dynamite. Number 1. Howard Stambler, 10 Cloverfield Lane Though this surprise Cloverfield spin-off was generally well received by critics and audiences alike, by far the most common criticism is that in the final few minutes, an alien spacecraft shows up after demented survivalist Howard Stambler, played by John Goodman, dies. But you might be a little bit surprised to learn that Stambler actually dies 20 minutes before the end of the story. Moreover, there's a little bit more of a breather between his death and the arrival of the spacecraft than you probably remember, as Michelle, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, removes her gas mask and surveys the area for a few minutes. Further still, that final showdown between Michelle and the ship is fairly drawn out and suspenseful, but because Goodman Stambler is such an overpowering presence throughout the whole movie, it's easy to assume that he sticks around a lot longer than his character actually does. Well there you have it, 7 movies where the villain dies a lot lot earlier than you think. If you know of any more please let us know in the comments because I'd love to do a second part of this. Also make sure you drop us a like by clicking the relevant button and subscribe to us because we are fabulous. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at M-A-R C-U-S-B-R-O-N-Z-Y, Marcus Bronzy. And my podcast is called Ain't Got A Clue. Type that in to wherever you get your pods from. Until next time, stay blessed. YouTube, The Unexpected Frontier. These are the videos of WhatCulture.com, its continuing mission to list strange new facts, seek out news and offbeat discoveries, to boldly go where no What Culture channel has gone before. Hey, how would you guys like to start a Star Trek channel? Hell yeah! No, sorry, how's he got a uniform? I've been asking for one Who for months is now. Spiding money, I've been sipping jippers on the beach somewhere. Hell yeah! Is he even cold? Hell yeah! If I had money, I'd be sipping jippers on the beach somewhere. Literally months, I've been asking for one. Hell yeah! If I had money, I'd be sipping jippers on the beach somewhere. Hell yeah! If I had money, I'd be sipping jippers on the beach somewhere. Hell yeah! If I had money, I'd be sipping jippers on the beach somewhere. Hi. I'm Marcus, Marcus Bronzy, new presenter for Trek Culture, what culture's new home for all things Star Trek related. Now we've already got a bunch of great content like Adam Cleary's ups and downs for every new episode of Picard, and we'll of course have all of the lists and rankings that you know and love us for. I've been Captain Marcus Bronzy, until next time, kapla!